So, of course, over the last couple days, we've had a lot of things go on. And I just want to sit here and talk about some of the stuff. College football, that video game came out. Joe Biden and what the Democratic Party is doing. Ever since I last got on here, Donald Trump had an assassination attempt on his life. There's the Team USA exhibition games. There's a lot to talk about, and I will be talking about some of that today. But first, before we get into it, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Please help me out a little bit. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. Now, Joe Biden and the election. As we all know, Joe Biden dropped out. My reaction to that, I'm neither disappointed nor surprised. He's just too old. The guy has COVID. Apparently, he's been experiencing possible cognitive decline. I just don't see how he would have been able to do four more years if he did win the election. I don't see how he would have been able to do four more years as a president. It was clear that he was not as sharp and is not as sharp as he once was. And as of right now, the Republican Party is looking fairly strong at the moment. They have a strong candidate in Trump. They have all the attention seemingly in the world right now with the recent events that have been made or the recent threats and events that have uh, threatened Donald Trump's life. Uh, they look strong and they look fairly capable to a lot of people when it comes to leading the United States for the next four years. Granted, I am not a Trump supporter, nor do I identify with either side. I'm not 100% Republican. I'm not 100% Democrat, although I do lean to the left typically a little bit. So the question is, who's going to be the candidate to step in for Joe Biden? Well, that's a good question. That's a very interesting question and one that took... A crazy amount of research to come up to I, I had to do a lot of research for it but these are the three candidates who I think are more than likely the best three candidates to step in in any position president vice president whatever you would like to call it first is the most obvious one Kamala Harris is the obvious choice she has the experience she's seen what Joe Biden has been able to do for these last four years she would be the first woman to ever be the president of the United States if she won there's only one issue though and it's got nothing to do with her policies or what she may believe in. I just don't know about her likability. There have been a lot of false things spread about her. There have been a lot of uh, people saying that she's not for black individuals, which is completely 100% false, by the way. There are a lot of people saying that she incarcerated thousands of men, which she did not. Only 45 men ended up being put in jail or prison for uh, their acts and what they committed and what they did as a result of her work. All of that stuff, whether true or untrue, is really, really, really having a huge impact on her likability. I'm just not sure if people are going to like her enough. And that is huge when we're talking about an election where cachet and likability and all that stuff is going to matter a lot. I'm very confident that she would be a capable leader, I may add. Now, going to my next guy, my favorite candidate, in my opinion, Gavin Newsom. From what I've researched, again, one of my favorite possible candidates. He's the governor of California. He's for human rights. He's for education. He's for civil rights. He's for expanding opportunities. And he wants more strict weapon control in the U.S., which, in my opinion, as a guy that's been all around the globe, is something that needs to happen as fast as possible. He's also really, really popular and seems very likable. I think he could be your guy to win the election. I think he'll be your guy to do it. I think he has the cachet. I think he has a state that is key in the election, which is California, which is usually Democratic. But then again, anything can change. And California is the largest state in the United States when it comes to electoral votes. That is a major, major, major state to win. I'm really, really, really siding with Gavin Newsom. I am, again, I lean towards the left side. I enjoy some of the policies or, excuse me, I, uh, I, I like some of the policies that he would be willing to implement if he did become president. I like what he's doing as the governor of California. I think it's really good, and I agree with a lot of the things um, that he stands for. Now, going to our last possible candidate, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Now, he's running as an independent, and he has some interesting views, prioritizing peace, care for our environment. He wants to prioritize human rights and enact policies that favor small and medium-sized businesses and not just larger businesses. While I can say that I don't agree with everything that he said, because people, you know, people may think he's a conspiracy theorist and stuff like that. I don't agree with everything he said, but I do consider him a solid candidate. I would vote for him in the event that it's, you know, him versus Donald Trump or him versus a lot of other people in the race. I think he's an interesting candidate. Now, the only problem is that he's in the independent party, and I don't know if you're going to get enough people to vote independent, right? 
our government is mainly dominated by Republic and Democrat. And it's going to be really, really, really difficult to get a third party into that mix. If anything, that could just divide the vote. And I don't know if that's going to be good, uh, particularly for the Democratic Party during this election. I don't know if that's going to be good. But I do like RFK Jr. I don't blame anybody for voting for him. I think he's an absolutely fantastic candidate. Although Gavin Newsom is my favorite. I like Gavin Newsom better than I like all of the three for a multitude of different reasons. But, of course, Kamala Harris, they're saying that she's going to be the nominee. I'm trying to wait for the Democratic Convention in Chicago to really confirm that. But they're saying she's going to be the nominee. If she's the Democratic nominee, she has my vote. I have trust in her. I think she could be a very capable leader. Now... Yeah.